When the fires crisp the horizon, and the sun set for the long night, hundreds of thousands perished in an instant. The air forced out of their lungs as they desperately looked to the skies and prayed for their goddesses to save them. During the following weeks, thousands more would wither away during the Wendigo's harvest. At the tail end, hundreds more fought over what little remained and left nothing for those that couldn't provide for themselves. The old, sick, dying, and even foals were seen as liabilities. Unfortunately, these were the first to be simply tossed over city walls or placed into shallow ditches far away from any remaining villages, only to await a slow and agonizing death. While the reality of becoming a creature's next meal was always a possibility, it was often the desperate that came to claim these weakened ponies for their next meal. To imagine the thoughts that ran through the suffering's minds when they saw the mares of the green cloak reach out to them must have been a sensation they haven't felt since their mother's embrace from when they were just a foal, often viewed as a few who still uphold the virtues of self-sacrifice, empathy, and generosity. The unwithered lily has become a beacon for hope during these trying times. Outside the chapters of nights, no other order has paid so high a price to defend those that cannot defend themselves. Let it be known that this is one of the many tales in the vast history of the apothecaries of Lily's Valley. The horrors of the long night scarred all those who survived. For those in the trenches battling their way through the hordes of monsters and desperate survivors, it was a living hell. For the first apothecaries, it was a chaos that they needed to slug through. Putting their own needs aside, these mares ventured to the most neglected regions of what was left of Equestria. Often only armed with a dagger, these mares cut their way through hell and even got proficient in dealing with these types of environment. The first pocket there. Little is known about the first pocket there, other than she had a lily for her cutie mark and had a pink coat. For the first months of the long night, this mare ventured alone into hell. Her journeys through the blight and red lakes reference the horrors she witnessed, but those records will be expanded upon on a later date. One is to know that the mere sights and sounds alone would have broken the most battle-hardened knights, and yet she pushed on. In time, the first apothecary gathered a small following of mares that she had saved on her journeys. These mares traveled beyond the safety of city walls in order to survey the lands and save as many ponies as they could. They would also establish safe routes and hidden locations that they only knew of. Unfortunately, their safe routes weren't always so safe. Worse, their hidden locations would be infested with howlers and other creatures. Out of the dozen or so mares that ventured out, it was a common sight for only half to return, with an extra bloody pin on a returning mare's cloak. After the few cities were able to stand on their own, the mares embarked on a sudden exodus venturing into the lands of the Red Guardians. The first apothecary led her sisters to their new home, Lily's Valley. Surrounded by hundreds of miles of dense brush, Lily's Valley was protected by most outside forces. Occasionally, a creature or a lost warband will find their way into the valley. However, Defensive measures, along with a few knights permanently garrisoned there, often make quick work of any hostile force. Lily's Valley is one of the few places of Equestria left. A grand river runs from a spring within Mount Lionheart. The soil is rich and often provides a surplus that the apothecaries use to donate and trade. Upon discovery, the mountain had a built-in keep that overlooked the valley. The keep was abandoned. It was unknown for how long, but stores of raw materials were found all along the inner supply rooms throughout the castle. The keep has now been converted into a monastery for the apothecaries to learn, rest, and train in. 
it is still a mystery on why this land is well protected, or how the first apothecary found this bounty in a land filled with death and destruction. But the secret passages that lead into the valley are a guarded secret that only the chief apothecary, seekers, and trusted few chapter masters of the Knight's Orders know of them. The mares of Lily's Valley are made up mostly of orphan fillies. From a young age, many are taught skills in the regards to becoming a physician, scholar, or even a soldier during great times of need. The order is mostly made up of earth pony mares, with a few unicorn mares. There are four different ranks to the hierarchy. Initiates are often the new blood of the order. Mostly made up of fillies, they'll grow up learning one of the main three traits mentioned earlier before. It is rare, but adult mares have entered the order and made it their home. To complete their training, initiates must venture off to a chapter of knights and offer their services. Only after serving their vow can they choose to either return to be elevated or stay in the outside world. Initiates are seen often wearing a simple scarf and saddlebags that hold their healing remedies along with other supplies. If the initiate chooses to return, a seeker will be tasked to return them home. Seekers are often made up of unicorns. These unicorns use their magic to blend into their surroundings, cover their tracks, and manipulate the minds of those around them. Hence, seekers often lead initiates and lower ranking sisters inside and outside the valley. As the initiate won't be able to tell which routes were really taken, Due to a simple trick of the mind, seekers were the same as initiates, with the addition of a cloak. Their cloak will often have a lily embroidered along their back or on the sides of their hood. They are often armed with long-distance weapons, such as bows or spears, all in order to use their abilities to their full potential. Apocatheries travel with seekers in order to fulfill a vow. It is quite common for apocatheries to travel with knights. However, it's not uncommon to see them traveling alone. Seeking out the needy is their priority. However, seeking lost medical knowledge is considered another high priority. These members are the most unorthodox of the three ranks. Apocatheries often come and go as they please only returning to report newly gained information or to recover after a long watch. Missions can last for months, to the longest on record being five years. If an apothecary is to fall, a veteran seeker will often be sent to either recover their body or bury them if recovery is impossible at the time. Recovery of journals and books are of a high priority. It is said that a single apothecary by the name of Wanderer gathered over a hundred years of worth of knowledge before passing away of natural causes. Apothecaries normally wear a metal lily pin in their mane, or as a necklace, or even a head accessory for unicorns. They normally wear light armor underneath their cloak, or a tunic for some protection. When the initiate is ready to choose their path, they must recite Lily's Oath After the Chief Apocrytheri approves of their oath, she will gift the elevated member a dagger. Each mare knows what lies ahead of them in the real world when she has been elevated to a Seeger or Apocrytheri. If all is truly lost, each dagger has a single dose of poison that will kill the mare in seconds. Each time, the chief apothecary warns every newly elevated member. It is better for those monsters to keep your broken body rather than letting them take the time to break your soul. I want to thank all of those for sticking around and listening to the apothecaries of Lily's Valley. I would like to also give my thanks to those Anons that left some feedback in the thread as well as even on SciTube. 
gave me a little bit of a chuckle when the comments were being made about uh, this guy sounds like the the Burger King foot lettuce guy. Um, I really appreciate that. And yes, my voice is kind of a little weird, but if I don't talk like this, somewhat monotone or very boring and for, for some, um, it's basically like nails on a chalkboard. So I have to talk like this. I have to still work on my skills. In the future, I will put more of a conscious effort when it comes down to actually reading my scripts. I'm not going to try to do so much weird and awkward cuts that sound, you know, very out of place, very awkward. So that's from, you know, the future on now. Um, the other video that's going to come after, which is going to be the Lunar Nights, it might sound still uh, similar to these last two videos. So again, for the future, I will put a lot more time and of course, a lot more effort. I enjoy putting this content out there for you guys. You guys gave me a lot of things to think about and a lot of other feedback and such. So as always, it's been a pleasure. I hope all of you guys enjoy the rest of the con and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you very much and have a good night.